Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We had a couple of 3.9.1 PTU patch updates with a B and a C patch. The 3.9.1 patch is going to be live for Fleet Week starting the 22nd of May and aims to address some of the major problems in the 3.9 branch as well as get ready for Fleet Week with that in-game event. Let's take a look at the patch notes for the two latest patches. The Drake Cutlass Blue is flyable in the PTU now and it's going to be um, in live as well. It will be immediately available to anyone that already owns it when it goes live. It will also be available to buy and freely rent on the 30th of May and 1st of June from the Drake Defense Con Fleet Week days. Uh, it has prisoner pods and a quantum dampening device and a bit of a different default loadout, but is otherwise a cutlass black. I mean, obviously it's quite a bit different, but it can have the same loadouts as a cutlass black other than the, the uh, prisoner pods and the quantum dampening device. It's got a huge amount of utility. I really like it. Um, and I'm hoping that it has more armor than the Cutlass Black, but at the moment it's pretty paper thin, in my opinion. They've adjusted the amount of wind present on planets to reduce the overall frequency of storms, which is probably sensible. You want um, some planets to have a load of storms, others to have very few, but still happen sometimes. Cry Astro services should now be working correctly at all locations, so we can get um, our rearm, repair, and refuel without having to bomb a fix. Uh, the duplicate and static trams should no longer be appearing at landing zones. That is not true though. I have definitely seen some extra trains um, duplicated. Uh, reclaimer soap dispensers in the bathrooms should no longer be replace me balls. Players should no longer stand up on beds and then cause them to clip through geometry after logging back in from certain ships after they've logged off and come back into the persistent universe. They fixed missing levels of detail and collision issues with security docks on space stations. Autopilots should now correctly disengage after triggering it by flying into a restricted area. And that's the, the current way they're dealing with uh, people in restricted areas. They try to autopilot them out rather than um, a hard kill zone. The headlight glow textures on the Argo Mole should now display correctly when headlights are on. They fixed reflection lighting issues on the interior cockpit glass of the Freelancer, Staff Error, and the Prospector. They fixed multiple Replace Me textures present around the cockpit and exteriors of the Anvil Valkyrie, the Liberator variant there. They fixed an issue in Arena Commander, single player mode, that caused players to be unable to change ship selection. Rear aft turrets should no longer be missing from the Carrack and Carrack Expedition versions. The lower aft turret on the Carrack should no longer have intrusive reflections that obscure players' views. They fix clipping issues on entry and exit of military-style bunks on the Hammerhead, Carrack, and Reclaimer. Female characters should no longer exit out of the Prospector's bed on the wrong side. Players should no longer hear voiceover IP, party, or proximity chats globally. In the 3.9.1c patch, they increased the flight speed of the Cutlass Blue further. They added the Drake Caterpillar, Cutlass Red, and Cutlass Blue to Arena Commander's inventory. They fixed an issue that could cause players to lose collision and go into a no-clip state. Players should no longer be given a criminal stat for not stopping for a security patrol and should correctly be given an inf fraction. Mission givers should now speak or animate correctly if a player accepts an invite mission while they are not streamed in. They fixed even more missing levels of detail and geometry on the station security docks. There should no longer be a spot of missing texture at TESA spaceport on Lawville. Between those patches, they also fixed six server crashes, seven client crashes, and a server deadlock. There are some known issues still in the current PTU build, though. Outposts on Hurston with a trading console available do not see landed ships. Some prison problems, the multi-tool um, from the prison commissary does not come equipped with an orbit mining attachment. And if a player exits, um, disconnects, or crashes to the menu during the prison load screen, their um, loadout will not change properly. Uh, ships can be displayed in an unknown state, unclaimable and irretrievable, which is obviously uh, probably the, the major problem uh, in 3.9.1 at the moment. Uh, I think some people are still getting, obviously, 30k errors because that's a big catchment term for any form of disconnect, whether the server crashes or the client disconnects from it. Obviously, the two trams coming to the station is still a reoccurring bug.
Fleet Week is incoming, and hopefully those known issues and any other issues that they can get fixed for 3.9.1 will make the game in a much better state. Stability is extremely good in the current patch, and frame rates do seem to be up. The entranceway to the Brevik Convention Center at Area 18 is already for Fleet Week, as are the military docks for the UEE parades or whatever as they're having uh, from the stations around Arc Corp, Hurston, and Microtech. We do know that the 3.9.1 patch will bring a load of new ship skins that will be available to buy and freely move around appropriate ships as well with 3.9.1. So yeah, some cool stuff. Will we get anything else straight to flyable and drivable? And um, will there be some other surprises? Almost certainly. I'll be doing a load of coverage for Fleet Week uh, and that event starting tomorrow. But please tell me, what are you hoping to see during Fleet Week? What are you looking forward to? Are you going to pick up anything? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. We do have a giveaway for May. We're giving away an arrow and game package for Star Citizen. Just comment on any of my videos to be in for a chance of winning that. Uh, I also shill for a couple of companies. Uh, check out NordVPN if you're looking for a VPN because it gives you more security and privacy. And in a world where we're all working from home and stuff like that, uh, it's just much better to be more sensible about your security. Also, there's Shadow, which is a subscription-based cloud gaming PC service. So instead of maintaining your own gaming PC, you can basically rent an instance of a PC off them effectively and then stream it to another device like a lesser PC or a laptop or your phone or whatever so you don't have to maintain your own gaming PC. It's a great alternative. If you want to use either of those services, use the code BoardGamer to get some discounts. And if you want to further support the channel, there's Patreon. You can click on the YouTube Join button. Um, remember to like and subscribe. All that jazz and any of your feedback genuinely helps my channel grow. Thanks so much, guys. You take care and I'll see you in the verse.